Horn is a new metal band from Bakersfield, California that was formed in 1993. They released their debut album, Korn, in 1994, followed by Life is Peachy in 1996, and hit mainstream success in 1998 with Follow the Leader and Issues. The band is identified as the pioneers of new metal music, a form of alternative metal which began in the mid-90s. They were known to mix funk, hip-hop, groove, dissonance, and later on dubstep into their metal style to create unique sounds that put them on the map. Their music has appeared in various movies, TV shows, and won them a number of prestigious awards. But today, we're going to talk about the meaning behind some of that music and the lead singer who survived a childhood of pain to get to it. First, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about today's video's sponsor, Audible. Audible is perfect for listening on the go. Whether you're hanging out at home or traveling, you'll never have to pack a dang book again. Audible contains an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audio producers, broadcasters, and entertainers. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial along with one free title that you can keep when you go to audibletrial.com slash white rabbit or click the link in the description. This month, I'm recommending Stephen King's Nightmares and Dreamscapes, which has three volumes, a bunch of famous voices to narrate including my boy Tim Curry, and a sweet anthology of short stories from the world-famous horror writer Mr. King. As always, thank you Audible for sponsoring this video and supporting creators of all kind. Now let's get back to it. Jonathan Davis was born January 18, 1971 in Bakersfield, California to Rick Davis and Holly Chavez. His father was a keyboardist for Buck Owens and Frank Zappa, while his mother was a professional dancer and actress. Jonathan suffered severe asthma as a kid. When he was five, he survived an asthma attack so severe he was clinically dead for several minutes before the doctors could bring him back. Afterwards, he was in and out of the hospital for most of his childhood. At age three, Jonathan's parents divorced and he was taken in by his father and his new wife Lily, which he says was not in his stepmother's interests. She was described by Jonathan as the most evil fucked up person I've ever met in my life. He says she used to harass him and torture him, giving him tea mixed with Thai hot oil and jalapeno when he was sick, locking him in cabinets, and putting out cigarettes on his arms. The song Kill You was written about her. No names were ever put on record in regards to the sexual abuse Davis experienced as a child. The lead singer has explained the song Daddy is based on his real experience with being assaulted and his parents not believing him. We know the abuser was a close family friend of theirs who did this regularly. He states, I went to my parents and told them about it, and they thought I was lying and joking around. They never did shit about it. They didn't believe it was happening to their son. He hasn't said much else about it. The song has meant a lot to Jonathan, and he doesn't play it live too often for fear that it will lose its meaning if played too much. And at the end of the track, you can hear him break down in tears. The emotions are very real. Jonathan has said that his earliest musical influences as a child were the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical Jesus Christ Superstar and his favorite band Duran Duran. His taste in music, interest in the arts, the clothes, and the eyeliner he wore in high school were all grounds for his years of being bullied. He'd be subject to verbal abuse by not only the other students, but teachers as well calling him homophobic names and beating him down just for being different. They even sent me to a gay counselor, Jonathan recalls. Everyone was calling me gay. I tried to be with a guy and it was totally disgusting, but I had to find out because everyone in the fucking world was telling me I was. The tattoo HIV on his upper left arm is a constant reminder of the bullying he endured. The song Faggot was created after this time in his life, giving us a glimpse of life through the singer's eyes as a tormented and confused kid. Jonathan had begun to find comfort from his torments in music, and when he joined Korn in his early 20s, it was both therapeutic and damaging to him. He had already begun turning to alcohol to block out his pain, but being in a rock band brought on additional pressures to act a certain way. He stated, 
You see Motley Crue and all the debauchery and alcohol and drugs and think, that's what I have to do to be a rock star. So I started drinking a bottle of Jack and a bottle of Jägermeister a day. I drink 30 Jack and Cokes a night, and that's when my mental problems started. He also struggled with a drug problem. I was an upper kid, he continued. I'd be spun out, sleep deprived, and hearing shit. You're up for two days, go down for one, and have to do lines to get out of bed again. In the band's first two albums, Corn and Life is Peachy, you can hear the effects of his strung out lifestyle. By the third album, he was trying to quit the speed and relied more on alcohol to do so. All of this mixed with his troubled past would cause the singer a series of panic attacks for two years. He explained, I get panic attacks when I woke up and have them all day. I got schizophrenic and paranoid, and I stopped eating because I thought people were poisoning my food. He couldn't even turn to the relief of performing as he usually did. The panic attacks started hitting him on stage, caused by all the people staring at him. Deep bouts of depression and constant fear of his panic attacks had him wishing he didn't wake up in the morning. But when his grandfather died, he made the choice to stop the substance abuse. He claims that he's not used alcohol or drugs since August 22, 1998. On the band's Deuce DVD, Jonathan's bandmates all say they're very proud of him for his sobriety. However, in 2006, dangers still presented themselves in Davis's life. He missed Korn's download performance because he became terrifyingly ill. He discovered he had immune cytopenic purpura, which means he had no platelets, which stops bleeding. He states, I thought I was going to die. I was pouring blood out of me. My gums were bleeding and I had bruises all over my body. Luckily, he got the help he needed at a London clinic. He'd gotten the disorder from taking the antibiotic Keflix, something his bass player had taken as well and wasn't so fortunate to survive. Jonathan has been married twice and has three kids. After his second divorce, Jonathan filed a domestic violence restraining order against his second ex, Devin, alleging she was deep into drugs, something that she struggled with for over 20 years. Having struggled with substance abuse in the past, Jonathan wanted to distance himself from the lifestyle, something Devin should have done herself because on August 12, 2008, she died at the age of 39, and the cause was a fatal overdose. Jonathan commented, over the past decade, my wife has been very, very sick. She had a serious mental illness, and her addiction was a side effect. I loved her with all my being. When she was her true self, she was an amazing wife, mother, and friend. Devin had a huge heart, and would never intentionally hurt her children or anyone that she loved. Jonathan was able to endure the horrors of his childhood as well as the hardships of coping as an adult and turned it into something everyone can be entertained by, whether it comes from understanding what he went through or just loving the music. He was able to turn childhood trauma into a form of art, and it's very well reflected in his performances. The incomprehensible growling sounds he's known for, the fits of rage and tantrums he exerts on stage, the rare emotional performance of Daddy, all stem from what others put him through as a child. The people who were supposed to protect him failed him. His teachers and peers who were supposed to work beside him bullied him. But he managed to come out on top and entertain the world with his pain. We all hope that as the world evolves, torment like his lessens in the future, and his story will continue to inspire those who are struggling with the hardships of feeling different. Guardians should never ignore serious problems brought to their attention. It's never okay to think it'll never happen to my kid and use it as an excuse to disprove what they're saying. Many kids are afraid to bring issues of abuse to their parents for fear that they'll be ignored or get into trouble, and that's not okay. The positive outcome of what Jonathan went through was that he was able to create from it. He survived to see the damage of what he was doing to himself in order to cope and turn that around as well. And I think that's pretty fucking metal. Once again, thank you to Audible for supporting this video. If you'd like to get that free trial and a free audiobook, link's in the description. Also, a big thank you to Justin Ryan for your generous donation. If you're a fan of the Holder or SCP series, consider becoming a patron for exclusive videos featuring those stories once a month. 
If not, a subscription to the channel is just as appreciated. Until next time, be well.